Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone. Welcome to another episode of The Revolution of Interdependence. My guest today is Paul Padmore from My Perfect Failure, and this is going to be a really great, I'm ex I've been excited about this interview for a while. So Paul, just by way of biographical background, he's got a successful career in the digital advertising space. Um, today, he works on a customer engagement team with a, with a large um, consultancy in London. But what he's most known for is the way he was able to encounter certain failures in his life and keep going. And that's what he's here to really share his insight with, uh, with us about today is how to experience failure and really make failure your ally. And so I'm super excited. Paul, welcome. Hey, hey Will. Oh, we were just talking about this is role reversal. So I'm, I'm, I'm super excited to have this conversation, but also I'm equally super excited to, to get you on a, my perfect failure and hear your journey. But um, yeah, so that will be in, in a matter of days. But, um, but thank you for the opportunity. You bet, you bet. All right, so we are the we are a revolution of interdependence. So we're always focused on mutual dependence, kind of how we help each other succeed. Yeah. So there's one question we always start with for every guest, which is tell us the story of somebody or something, some group that really made a difference for you. Okay, I think where I want to start with it, to answer that question is with an old work colleague, um, Tim. So the reason I want to start with Tim, I think he's, uh, the reason I like to start with Tim is because when I, so part of my background has been working in a sales capacity. So sales can be quite a, you know, you have to have resilience in sales. You have to be able to deal with disappointment in sales. And you, you know, you, you know, if you're lucky, you'll have good, mentors and people around you who can help you who can guide you and also they can give you that bit of confidence that you need when you know you're getting those rejections so the reason i i when you as you've asked that question that's tim springs to mind you know he's the immediate person that comes into my headspace there'll be others definitely that have helped me along the way but he was the first person that came into my you know, instantly came into my headspace. And what he was remarkable at is not just for me, but for the team was instilling that confidence that you are great. You know, we do, we are, we do have a great team. You know, the client, you know, they do love our products. They will love our products. We, when we talk to them, whether it be on the phone or whether it be in person, you know, they're lucky to have us in their company and have us pitching. We are better than our, in, than our competitors. And he had this, this way of, uh, and I think he used it on him. And I think it was a way that he became so good at what he did in, in sales capacity. And just, just, you know, it, it doesn't necessarily just have to be clients. It can be internally when you're speaking to other stakeholders that have a different perspective. Maybe they're targeted a little bit differently or they've got a different um, perspective and you have to radiate that confidence in those discussions as well. And so I, I learned an awful lot from him and not just me, lots of other colleagues as well, our, you know, our peers. And what's lovely about that is that we none, none of us work with each other today but we've all gone on to do different things. And sometimes I might speak to one of the guys periodically. You know, like when you're having, you know, like when you're reminiscing about, you know, when we worked with each other, you know, numerous years ago and we had so much fun, there were challenging moments as well, but he's often brought up by other people as well. There's somebody that just gave them that confidence and in those difficult moments in new businesses that we've all worked for since, since those days, they still use that so the techniques and the you know the memories of those conversations we still remember and um yeah so he, he was somebody that just gave just gave you that confidence to be able to to speak to anybody to be as though that we were you know we shouldn't be 
we should be comfortable that we're in any room in any conversation regardless of the person how senior or how junior so yeah so tim i love that and isn't it amazing how um, sometimes I use the phrase emotional capitalism, like investing love and belief in other people. Mm. It isn't amazing how that investment of love in us and belief in us can it can come back to us years, decades mm. later um, in such powerful ways. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I am excited to hear your story because it's the way you got to this, this understanding that mm. failure can be a real ally. Yeah. So let's start broadly. Tell us your story. Tell us how you came to this understanding of, of having the, the idea of a perfect failure. Yeah. So, so, so yeah. So my background, as you rightly said, is working in digital advertising. So in the UK, we've got, as you've got in the US, you've got some national publishers. I worked for a couple of the national publishers, had an amazing time. Tim was headed up a couple of those. And, um, I was part of the digital uh, monetization team mm. and we had a lovely time together. We, we built friendships and we had some success along the way. So that was brilliant. So did that for probably about eight or nine years. And then I got the opportunity to pivot and it was staying within the same ecosystem, but it was essentially, instead of, be, instead of actually being the publisher, I actually, sort of changed seats and became a tech provider. So, and I went to work for a startup and I was working with friends that I'd, so we'd all worked with each other at one time or another, we'd all work with one, with one another. So it's probably about, how many of us were there? It's probably about nine of us all together. And we started with, you know, we're all a little bit nervous, but we were ex equally really excited and we had you know, lofty expectations about who we are and we were going to make a splash in, in, the, in that space. And so, so probably, so we had an okay start and then, then quickly it became apparent that it was going to be a lot tougher yeah. than we anticipated. Maybe, I guess I can speak for me, maybe it's going to be tougher than I anticipated. And, and I, I guess each out of those nine people, they, we'd all have a different uh, perspective. It'd probably be fairly close, but it might be slightly different. But uh, from my perspective, it was, you know, it became quite tough, you know, quite quickly. So my role was to look after our growth and look after partnerships. So what I wanted to, so part of what I wanted to do was to leverage a lot of the relationships that I'd accumulated over the years in that space, work with them collaboratively to, to essentially generate revenue for them, for me, and for our clients. But it, it, as, as I said, it became apparent reasonably quickly after about five-ish months that it was going to be a challenge. And what, and, and because we didn't have much capital to underpin the, um, under, underpin the, the, the business, we kind of like needed to work to make money quite quickly and in that ecosystem you can pretty much see you can look at dashboards so you can really see what the revenue is like like on a, on a daily basis and so after that after getting on for probably about seven months i realized that my that i was vulnerable in in terms of my position in the company because there wasn't enough money maybe to underpin my seat and uh, after that 10 months i got made redundant but while, but while I was leading up to that, while I was that, that gap between the seventh and the tenth month, I started thinking about people like uh, Thomas Edison, JK, JK Rowling. I don't know why I, I started thinking about them. I don't know why they immediately came into to my head. I think it was probably a little bit of desperation. I was hoping that this challenge might turn out to be something quite beautiful in the end. Right. But uh, but ultimately, I've got my redundant. So I was thinking, <laughs> thinking about them. It really hasn't turned out the same the same for me as it did for Thomas Edison and J.K. Rowling. So quite luckily, I've kind of got. So I felt kind of you know massively deflated, um, and it, you know, it felt a little bit of shame, a little bit of um, embarrassment, just because I'd left a 
you know, the corporate role and it was quite safe there. But I, I left for the right reasons. I kind of was a little bit bored, uninspired. I left for the right reasons, I think. No, I, I know, not I think. Right. That was the right decision to leave. But uh, all the same, I felt, you know, disappointed, a little bit embarrassed. But luckily, I got another job quite quickly. But for about a, a year after that point, I started to think about how people process failures and setbacks. Yeah. And as I started to, you know, read about it independently, you know, read books, you know, go, go on, uh, read magazines and websites and so forth, I realised that there are, I didn't know all what they were, but I realised that there's real opportunity in failure and disappointment. And for about a year and a half, I was in this zone of thinking about it. And then I, then I thought to myself, I need to do something with this yeah. because I could be at dinner, I could be on a tube, I could be in a supermarket. And I, it, it, the, the idea about how people process it would come into my, it, it come into my thoughts. And the thing that maybe that pushed me to do it, I thought about, you know, there's so many people globally that have had setbacks and how many of those people have viewed it as permanent which yeah. means that they're not experiencing experiencing a life that they want to be experiencing and can be experiencing so i love listening to podcasts and i thought i don't know how to make a podcast but maybe i can just go on youtube and find out so that's kind of like what i did and i i kind of like messed about with names I came up with my perfect failure I was going just going I had a name before that I can't remember what it was and it you know like when something you know like it's like a shirt that doesn't fit you properly or a pair of shoes doesn't fit you properly it didn't feel quite right and then I was going to a meeting and the, the name just came to me and I thought okay I'm, this this fits what I want to talk about so and then I got to the point that I'd created a website I'd I'd created the um the concept i'd gone on to um i chosen a hosting platform and i re then i was kind of ready to go and then i really had nobody to speak to and then i started reaching out to people not knowing whether people would engage with me because i'm you know because for that point i had imposter syndrome i didn't regard myself as a yeah. as a as a podcaster i just and i thought well people listen to tim ferris and tony robbins and any number of other people like why would they want to listen to me so but when i started to reach out to people yeah. they just started coming back to me and said i'd love to do it and and then i realized that there's a lot of you know people are, re are really keen to talk about the challenges that they have experienced and how they've overcome them and there's a lot of value you know i guess i would say a hundred percent of the people that I've spoken to on the podcast, and I've probably done about 180 episodes now, something around that. I've recorded more, but say published about around 180. And I've met, you know, the most amazing people globally. Yeah. And like bar none, virtually all those people are living their best lives after experiencing disappointment. And where and I'll, I'll sort of conclude so what i was able to ascertain for those guys is that they're able to take the information from those setbacks because right. what you know i wasn't doing before because i didn't I, you know it just wasn't in my i just didn't have the knowledge or the expertise right. but when we have setbacks you know we're human beings so we're going to be disappointed but what we should realize actually you've got new information there you've got new knowledge use that and actually you could it will take you places that it will take you potentially the places you wanted to go anyway or right. it might if you and it the information might be telling you paul you need to pivot you've got this information that you didn't have this before that right. way is not going to work for you you need to go over here because that's what the information is telling you and i realized that from a selfish perspective mainly i wanted to connect i wanted to put in this information out into the ether so it can help somebody 
anywhere they might listen to someone you obviously you're coming on the podcast will they might listen somebody might listen to you they could be in they could be in south africa they could be in new york they could be in london they could be in canada they could be in dublin and you might say one thing and you know people pick up different things but you could say one thing which might be the seed for them to mm. change their lives and i love the mystique sometimes people will write in and whatnot but i love the mystique of not knowing right <laughs> that you what connect it, with somebody yeah have you had any really big surprises have you had any people on on the podcast to talk about their failure and you and you were just blown away by what they told you yeah but one that sticks in my mind is a guy that came recently and um this guy was from Lebanon. Yeah. And so he came from a, a really difficult, impoverished um, upbringing, right. decided that he wanted to make a change in his life. So decided to move to Turkey, moved to Turkey, kind of elevated himself career wise and educational wise, got a job. I think he was working at Procter and Gamble and got a job. Yeah. Decided that he didn't want to, the corporate wasn't for him. And he was in a traffic jam one day. I didn't realize this, but Istanbul has a population of 16 million. I had, I had no idea. Very crowded, and, yeah. Yeah, so you can't get anywhere. So you're just stuck in traffic, traffic, traffic. So he decided that he was going to, you know, there was something here. So he left his job at Procter and Gamble. I'm not sure that his wife was was ecstatic because he you know, had a good job, and he decided that he was going to kind of like create a startup, like a um, it, it was almost like a not quite an Uber, but something along those lines yeah. uh, for for businesses. And oh, and it, he borrowed some money, and it didn't work. Mm. And so he thought, okay, I'm married, got responsibilities, I'm going to go back to corporate which he did, and then he thought, this isn't right. I still don't feel right. So he decided, I'm actually going to have another stab at, you know, um, you know, a startup again. And long story short, he, this is why it stands out to me. The whole journey does, but if it's in particular. So he needed to get investment for his startup. And he had, he went through 30, Eight meet well 39 meetings uh, yeah. talking, talking to investors getting totally uh, demolished by some of those conversations but what he learned he learned to always ask eventually he learned always to ask for feedback so every investor we spoke to said okay what could i do differently they would you know give him some advice and then he would say okay now is there anybody that you can refer me to that potentially I can go and pitch to. And eventually he got the investment that he needed and he tracked the moment he started asking that for referrals, he tracked that to the seventh meeting or the seventh pitch. That's yeah. when he got the investment and that really transformed his, you know, it transformed the opportunity to to really realize and, and grow that business. And he sold it to an investment company in April for 65 million. And, you know, there were lots of ups and downs. Sure, for, yeah. Yeah, you know, to get to that point where he sold the business, obviously the pandemic, he lost 90, I think he lost 87 or 90% of his revenue overnight because of the pandemic. Right. But then, you know, what, another another reason that I I admire him is that and you can you can probably see this in a lot of companies companies that are able to innovate and be creative during those difficult moments and invariably they're, they're the companies that are able to take a deep breath and actually think okay what else can we do what where can we where where are the quick wins and that's how he was able to navigate out of the pandemic yeah. find it find another re revenue stream which stabilized the business and then he was able to sell the business um in eight in april so great story yeah what so, is, there's lots though 
Yeah, if you could think like uh, maybe some of the overarching lessons. So you've now interviewed 180, more than 180, but you've mm. 180 podcast episodes of people that have come through failure. What do you think are some of the big lessons um, that that you've learned from sort of a meta a meta analysis of all of those interviews? Yeah. So I think I guess what I think is equal. So I didn't know the difference between a growth mindset and a fixed mindset. I think you know, having understanding the difference between a fix and a growth mindset, always be open to there's always the mind is very, very powerful. I didn't realize how powerful the mind is. So the types of positive information that we put into our our brain is pivotal. Right. And, you know, so I so I guess what I've what the things that I feel that have stood out for me over the last three years of connecting with people is, you know, have a strong network, have a good network. It kind of leans in to what you do. I think you have to have a good team around you and it doesn't necessarily have to be people that you see every day. Right. It could be people that you subscribe to their, their material. They might be people that listen to your podcast, Will, and for them, it's a weekly engagement because it gives them that, sense of positivity that sense of actually that sense of uh, team that sense of teamwork that you've got people that are pushing in the same direction as you um i think the ability to reframe situations you know because when the way that the brain works is that when something negative happens the brain is something can happen but the brain is five times more likely to to focus on negative stuff than positive so when you know that you can control those negative thoughts because those negative thoughts right. are kind of almost disarming you right. they're actually taken away mm -hmm. what you really want to do so for me it's really understanding how you think understanding that you know we all have it within us to right. turn by our thoughts by turning negative thoughts into positive when you're feeling negative take a moment go for a walk you know fresh air is amazing and you know you will come back with a new perspective and i think you know i, I really do think having you can't do it all alone and when you try and do it all alone i think you know the game's almost up because any anybody you know again pretty much all the guys and and um women that have come on to the podcast they've all had somebody there that they've been able to talk to who's been able to give them just counsel sometimes you just need to vent and talk and that some in some instances that can be enough so yeah. and i and of, of what i would say to anybody listening to this particular um, episode that the, the people that have come on to, to to the podcast they they've all managed to overcome you know the most you know the most extreme challenges and i'm always blown away how they're how they're able to do that so even when you think actually these things are quite tough at the moment which they potentially might be you know you have to think positively you have to think actually you know you you know we've all got i've got lovely friends i've got some friends that if i'm in a pickle probably i'm not going to call them they're probably although i've known them for years they're probably not going <laughs> to be a bit freaked out by me right. by me talking about stuff but actually i do have other friends other friends sorry right that are perfect for actually having um a conversation with and they can just give you perspective let you talk you can listen to them so you know if we think with hope if we think with you know the you know like a, a growth mindset right i think the world is our oyster but we just have to think differently let yeah. go of let go of the negative start listening to podcasts like yours start reading the right material 
start hanging around with the right people. Anybody that brings, you know, negatives, because you might say you want to do something. This has always been an ambition. Sometimes people will poo-poo will that because they might be, you know, they might be jealous that you might be talking about doing something. And to them, it might be, they might see you, you growing and you developing. So to really make sure, and it's not to say that they're not your friend and you shouldn't, you shouldn't, um, you know, hang up, hang with them socially, but make sure, you know, you don't have to tell them everything if they're going to give you a negative slant on it. If it's not their bag, they don't understand it, then, you know, have those conversations with the right people. Yeah. One thing I've heard you say, and this, this is going to get to our topic too, of making failure mm. your ally. I've yeah. heard you say that you feel like failure is more important than success. That's so counterintuitive in today's mm. world. Tell me why you say that. Yeah, but I think that sometimes success can happen by accident. And, um, and, so, and sometimes success can be dangerous because I think with success, sometimes you stop trying, you stop pushing the envelope. And I think with, and I'm not telling people to fail, but I'm telling people that if you've got a passion or a purpose, then you should push the envelope. If you push the envelope, you're gonna make mistakes but that's part of your journey. And when you push the envelope and you make those mistakes, literally it's almost you're getting seeds of information that are dropping onto the floor, which is new information, right. which, is actually, which is actually going to make whatever, you know, whether it be a service, a product, it could be a book, whatever you're, whatever you're trying to do, it's going to make it, it's going to make it better. And you're going to be, and you're going to, really push the envelope i think i think success is 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 tricky because i think most people that you know people that are you know to my mind that we view as successful you know outwardly that we view as successful like um elon musk or um or um jeff bezos or or uh, james dyson you know you know list goes on Sure. These guys have had huge setbacks, huge failures, and but we nobody talks about it. But they understand, you know, they're not looking to fail every day, but they know in order to push the envelope and to, you know, do wonderful things, that they will make mistakes, and sure. it's the ability to. To be able to process that and understand it's part of your journey and you know and, and there are people that might view themselves as, as, as successful and maybe they are but are they really pushing the envelope are, are you know are they really going to that next level right. and i think if you don't understand the difference between success and failure then if you think if you if you're afraid to fail then you you and you and you never because some people particularly in the uk the idea of failure is, is kind of like a taboo subject so right. if you don't if you're not prepared to fail then you've almost lost at, you know before you've got going right now do you as with all the people you've interviewed do you find that failure like I'm, I'm just, I love the fact that you were asking people to share their story of failure and they were anxious to come on because yeah. again, so countercultural, we think we're supposed to present this image of perfection. Like mm. we never fail, we've got everything right. Mm. And I'm, I'm just wondering if like, is there any lesson from there? Like what have you learned by people's willingness to be willing to, to come on and share the stories? Yeah, that's good, a great question. So I, I, what I've learned, I think is that they're in control of their ego. So like the, the ego is, can be quite damaging to us. Like when we are so focused on us and what other people think, it almost holds us back. And I think these people are just so insightful. They don't really care about what other people think. They know what is important to them and that's what they focus on. Like me, when I failed, it was more about what other people thought and when you and when we and I read something recently, I heard something recently that 
most of the time people that aren't you know why would they be thinking about Paul Padmore you know why would they be thinking about his failure and people you know most people are are fair-minded and kind and they'll be just like, okay you know so you know so be it I'm sure something else will crop up and it and it did so I think when we are at when we are able to control our ego and we are not fixated on what other people think then we really can move in the right direction and just focus on really what we want based on you know what our dreams and passions and, and purpose is because i think most people that we admire you know whether they be an actor an author or a business person you know not not all but i think there's a, a, a significant number that experience failure but they just get on with it and they're not really but they don't have time to think about what other people think about you know if it hadn't if it if there's a bad idea if it doesn't work they just push on with it because it you know they've got a purpose yeah yeah one of the examples i give often is richard branson who when he was 23 years old he went bankrupt yeah. and his mom, his mom mortgaged her home eve mm. branson mortgaged her mm. home to keep his little tiny little record store in east london afloat and now virgin records became virgin everything it, that's, that's yeah and, and not a lot of people will know that and yeah you know you it's you know it's not easy it you know it's not it's tough because some people listen to this they might think well that they might have had something they've always wanted to do right and you know you might be around people that don't give you the confidence to do that and if you really want to do it you just have to you know you, you just have to you know find that you know go with your passion go with the purpose and actually i think you know i think in the states you people talk about the great resignation where people are are really thinking about their own well-being what's important to me you know, it, you know, wouldn't it be amazing to actually want to get up in the morning and go and do the job that you want to do? And, you know, having worked in London for a number of years, you know, when you when you go to the bus, when you go to the tube and you look right and left and in front of you, most people will be on their mobile, but a lot of the people don't look thrilled to be going to, to work to do whatever they're doing and, and potentially a lot of those will be fine and be happy with, with doing that but definitely there is a, a significant number or there is a number that you know maybe don't have the confidence and right. one of the reasons i do the podcast is because i just want to be part of that conversation which gives people that confidence or awareness that they actually can live the life that they potentially don't talk about. It's just in their heads. Yeah. And because something's happened. And I and I truly believe, and I think this taps into what you talk about in your wonderful podcast, is that, you know, with the with you know, with connecting with the right people, right. understanding what you want to do, it is there for you. That is a perfect way to end our interview today. Thank you, Paul. How do people find you if they want to? Uh, uh, if you can just plug the uh, the podcast and your your social life, uh, so people. Yeah. Can, so so the, so the best place to find me is um pod, so www.myperfectfailure.com, and the podcast is the same name and it is in all the major directories. And if you do happen to listen to an episode, any feedback would be. Wonderful. So, and Will, thank you so much. This was amazing. Paul, thank you for your presence. And I'm so excited to share your message out with my audience. Wonderful. Take care. Right, cheers. Cheers.